This video introduces the time value of money. Specifically, we'll cover the future value and the present value of a lump sum. And in the process, we'll look at and use a financial calculator by Texas Instruments, the BA2+. Plus. Now this is a really important video because it sets the stage for the rest of the course. Bank loans, credit cards, mortgages, bonds, which we'll talk about and introduce in this course, and stock are all based on the time value of money. So if you want to learn how to value stocks that are traded in the stock market, bonds in the bond market, this is the course. And you should have a background in this, even if you don't study finance later on. You should understand a bit about the stock and bond market and how loans work. And it goes even further. If you want to value a business, any business, small business, you have a small business, what is the value of it? It's the present value of its future cash flows. Did you hear what I just said? The value of any business is the present value of its future cash flows. It's the time value of money concepts that I'm showing you here. So think about it. If you want to maximize the value of your business, then having an understanding of the time value of money and how cash flows work and the present value of cash flows, that's the key. That's why the time value of money is the foundation of business. If you want to understand how to maximize the value of a business, then you should have a handle on what the time value of money represents and how it, how it works. So obviously, the rest of your courses in business will be really important. Marketing, management, entrepreneurship, really important. But if you want to pin down what is the value of your business, how much money should be borrowed, and at what interest rate, this course will begin the conversation as to what are the variables that drive those values. Now, from what I just told you, you can recognize why this is called a finance course. Finance is all about how do you finance businesses. Businesses are financed by debt and equity. In other words, businesses borrow money or they get equity. An owner sinks money into the company. And then the question becomes, well, how much money should be borrowed? And what is the value of the business that I'm going to fund? Well, that's where this course comes into play. That's what finance is all about. So in order to figure out how to finance a company, you need to figure out, well, what would its debt be worth and what would the equity of the company be worth? So let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. There's a lot of material to unpack before we actually get into valuing a business. So let me jump right into future value and present value of lump sums. Okay, so let's start off with future value. And this is a future value of a lump sum. And it'll become apparent what we mean by a lump sum in a minute. So the way we start off with time value of money problems, and this is a time value of money problem, we want to figure out what is the future value of an amount right here at time zero. So I'm going to draw a timeline. I have a timeline here. Today is time zero. It's the present. This is the present. And here is the future. Let's say it's one year later. So this is one whole year right here. And we're going to start off with $100. And just $100, we're going to plop this $100 in a bank account. And let's assume it earns 5%. Now, I've organized things nice and neat here. And you, it'll become more apparent when, I, when we do annuities and other more extensive timelines where the timeline goes out with more periods. But I've put in the, the dollar amount here at a point in time above the line in a nice organized manner and then I put 5% because we're going to earn 5% throughout this time period and we have $100 right at this point in time and the question is what is the value in the bank account after one year at this point in time so we're looking for a dollar amount here and that dollar amount will be denoted as a future value because we're sitting right here this is going to be the future so that means right here this is a present value. So at present, we have $100. Drop it into a bank account. It earns 5%. What's this future value going to be? And you know from basic math that you take $100 and you take 1 plus the interest rate in decimal form, and you'll come up with $105 here. Okay, so that's not so bad. But now the question becomes, well, what happens if you have two periods? 
Oh, yeah, okay, here's a second period. And now we want to ask, well, what's the future value here at this point after two years? Okay. So this is the future, but this is now we're asking this future time, two periods from now. So you're going to earn 5% here and 5% here. What is this amount going to be? So you're going to take this 105, multiply it by 1.05. So 105 times the 1.05 and you're going to come up with $110.25. So you basically earned a little more than 10% in this whole two-year time frame, but you earned 5% here and 5% here. It compounded. So you got a little extra compounding on this $5 at 5%, and that accounts for the extra $0.25 cents that you earned. Because if you just earned 10% for this whole time period, you wouldn't have got that extra compounding period in there. So let's look at how to simplify this math down. So we took $100, we multiplied it by 1.05, then we multiply it by 1.05 again, we got $110.25. The same thing could be done this way. We could take that 105, square it, multiply it by the 100, and we'll get 110.25. This notation becomes much easier, say, if you have 30 periods. So if you have 30 periods, you're going to compound it 30 periods. You just put this to the 30 power, and you'll come up with a pretty big number here. So now let's, even, let's generalize this even further and put a formula to it. So basically, if we look at this, let's start right here. This was a present value, as I said. This was a future value. This was 1 plus the interest rate, I, in decimal form. So 5% is 0.05. And then we put it to the 1 power in this case, but nobody writes to the 1 power because it doesn't do anything. But in general, it's N power, depending on the number of time periods. So here, in this case, I had two time periods. So N was 2. Here was N was 30. So this is the general formula. Specifically now, this is the formula for a lump sum where we just plop down $100. We don't put any other money in this account. And then we ask, well, what's the ba ending balance, which is a future value? That's not too bad. That's very intuitive, and that's why I started out with future value first. Now let's look at the concept of present value. And with present value, you're typically given a future value, an N and an I, and you want to back in what the present value represents. It might help you to think of this as just one equation with one unknown is typically how it's presented. So you'll be given a problem, you'll be given a future value or a present value or an I or an N. You're going to have at least, uh, out of these four variables, you're going to have at least three. You're given three, you solve for the unknown. And so right now we want to do present value, so we want to solve for PV. Well, if you just rearrange this algebraically, you get present value equals future value divided by 1 plus i to the n power. So all I did was I took this and divided it by both sides. And there we have the formula. So you really need just this formula. You don't really need this formula because this is a simple rearrangement of what's going on here. So there you have the present value. Can I reinterpret this another way? Absolutely. If I was to say, look, I'm giving you $110 in two years, at $110.25 in two years, what's it worth today? What's it worth, what's the present value? So I'd be saying, look, here's $110.25. And I'm saying the interest rate is 5% and it's over, oops, and it's two periods. What is the present value? Well, it's going to be 100. You already know that, basically, from this problem. So my point is, when you calculate a future value, you have positive interest rates and you have time going forward. This is kind of like a snowball in effect. You get a snowball and you start rolling it. And you're rolling it at 5% rate. And it's compounding, and it's compounding, and it's getting bigger and bigger. And the snowball gets bigger. But when you go from a future value to a present value, it's kind of like rewinding the video that you have on this. It's like rewinding the tape. So you start out with something big, you end up with something small. So just keep in mind, 
future value is usually almost always bigger because if the interest rate's positive and you're going forward in time, there's no you have no choice but to have this guy future value is going to be bigger than the present value. So then the question is, well, why would you ever want to know what present value means? Well, if you buy an asset that generates $110, you know it's going to pay off $110.25 in two years. What is that asset worth? Given interest rates in the environment, in the, in the economy, or 5%, you'll pay $100 for that investment. So now, think about if you bought a stock, right? Just for a second here, think about if you bought a common stock off the, off the New York Stock Exchange, and it generates say, a, a dividend each period. What's the value of that stock? Well, it's going to be the present value of all the dividends that it generates. That'll come up in, the, in a later chapter. But I'm just trying to give you a little feel for what, the, the, what you can get out of these, these basic concepts. So now, let me give you an example, another example. Assume that interest rates are 3%. I equals 3%. So now I'm going to ask you, what would you rather have? What would you rather have? $420 today or $720 in 12 years from now? Which would you rather have? Well, let's see if we can figure this out. Well, we're going to have a timeline, time zero, and we got 12 years. I put a little wrinkly sign. I'm not going to do all 12 periods. That'll drive us crazy. So we know we have $720 here, okay? And we know we have $420 here. We know the interest rate is 3% for the whole time frame. And now the question is, which one's better? Well, there's two ways to solve it and you'll get consistent answers here. So there's two ways to solve it. So first off, let's take the 720, which is a future value, divide it by one plus the interest rate at 3% over 12 years, compute that, and the present value, so this is the future value, and this is one plus i to the n period, and the present value, so I'm putting it here at time zero so we line things up and we don't get confused, that'll be 504.99, about 505. So what's higher, 420 or 505? The 505 is better. So you'd rather have the 720 in 12 years from now, given that interest rates are 3%, because it's really worth 500 and you know, about $5. You can do the same analysis by going this way where you're given a present value of $420, you're going to compound it at 3% for 12 years, and what are you going to have? You're going to have 598.82. So what would you rather have 12 years from now? 720 or 598.82? This one. So regardless of which way you're looking at it, you'd rather have $720 12 years from now than you would $420 today in a simple time value of money calculation. So now here I have a financial calculator, the BA2 Plus from Texas Instruments like I told you about earlier. So this is a financial calculator. I'm going to use it to show you how to do some lump sum calculations present value, future value. And it'll be very helpful, not so much with, with, with lump sums because the math I just showed you is relatively simple. What you really will use this for is annuities, which will be another video. But let me introduce this, this calculator to you. It's a financial calculator because it has this, see this brown row right here? The brown row has N. That's the number of time periods we're going to compound. That's N right there. Then it has I slash Y interest rate per year. That's the I that I was showing you in the math earlier. And then we have, if you can't read that, that's PV. And then we have PMT here. It's, we haven't used PMT, that's payment. Because payment is applicable when you have an annuity. We haven't had an annuity, so we're not going to need this. 
we're going to set payment to zero when we do our calculations. And then the other thing here is this last button here is future value. So that's that's what makes a, a calculator, a financial calculator, if you have these buttons on it. Now some of you may have some a big engineering calculator and if you go deep into it you'll find the financial calculator mode in there and it'll have these type of concepts. May not be exactly the same letters but it has to have this, it has to have a number of time periods. It has to have an interest rate, present value, payment, and future value. They may be labeled ever so slightly different. So now what I want to do is let's calculate using this calculator. Let's calculate a from this. We we know we know the answer now, but we're going to do it on a calculator. Let's say we're given a future value and we're trying to compute the present value and interest rates are 3%, it's 12 periods. Okay, let's see if we can bang this out on the calculator and get the answer. First off, I'm going to set N to 12, right? And because it's 12 periods, the interest rate is 3%. I'm just going to put in three. You don't need a, you can't really put a percent in there. So you just put in three. And then you're going to hit present value. Well, that's what actually, this is what we're looking for. The payment is going to be zero because there's no other payment. This is a lump sum. Payment has to do with annuities where you make multiple payments in a stream. It's zero for now. So let's put it to zero. When you have lump sums, it's always going to be zero. And then we have a future value, and that's 720. So let me show you how to put this actually into a calculator. So First off, it's zeroed out. I gotta put it, hold it at an angle for so you can see the numbers. First off, you want to make sure that you have a lot of decimal places out. Notice that I got let, let's see, I got like six decimal places. So make sure that you can get that, you don't have it rounded so you have no decimal places. That'll be a pain. And you'll end up giving me some wrong answers and calculating wrong answers because it, it truncates things. So what you want to do is you want to hit you want to get to this, see this button right here that says format in yellow, and then it has a dot, period. That's the decimal place. So if you hit second here, and then hit this dot, which is format, and if you hit, let's say, two, and then enter, notice I have two decimal places to the right. If you can't see it, that's 2.00. So if, I, if that's what you start with, and some calculators default with that when you bring it out of the box, okay, what, you always, what you'll do is, if you want to break it back up to like five or six decimals, hit second, dot, let's do five. Five, and then enter. And there you go, five decimal places. And you hit clear, notice, it's zero, it's zero point, and then five decimal places to the right. So second format with the little dot here and then enter to make sure you got it it sticks now with that said let's hit in 12 so i'm going to punch in 12 12 n and then i'm going to hit 3 i slash y and then i'm going to skip payment present value at the moment i'm going to put payment of zero so zero payment and then i'm going to hit 720 FV and I'm going to hit compute. You see this little button right here? CPT compute and out will pop. I'm going to hit compute present value. And you notice what happened? It says minus 504.99 504 dollars and 99 cents it's exactly what I showed you here using the calculator. Now, you might ask, well, why is there a negative sign here? Well, you're going to have to get used to that because in the financial calculator, it's going to assume that you put money in and you're going to pull money out. So your calculator, in order to figure these numbers out, it needs an input and an output because you're going to deposit money into a bank account and you're going to withdraw money out of a bank account. What this is saying is, look, we deposited 720 and we're going to pull out 504.99. dollars 
and you could do it the opposite. You could plug in a minus 720, which means you're going to pull 720 out in two years from now. What do you have to plop into the account, meaning this will be positive? So you can play with this and put in minus 720, in which case you'll get a positive 504. You put in 504 at the beginning and at present, and then two years from now you can pull out. 720. So you got to get used to that. You'll get used to it because you'll end up calculating stock prices and bond prices using this financial calculator. And obviously, and I say obviously, stock and bond prices are positive. You don't have negative prices. So you'll know it when you see a negative sign to flip it into a positive based on the problem that's at hand. So then now the question is, well, if I start with... 420 today, let's see, right here, can I calculate a future value? Well, yeah, we can do that. Let's see if we get 598.82. So it's still 12 periods. The interest rate's still 3%. This time, we, we're not calculating present value. We're going to be inserting $420, inputting that, that present value. And the payment's still going to be zero. There's no other payments in between. This is just money we're depositing into the account. And then we're going to have a, let's make it positive for now, 720 future value. But one of these is going to be negative in order for the calculator to figure things out. So let's actually bang it out here. Technically, you don't really have to redo this because it's already, 12 is already in for N, but I'm going to do it just to make sure. Three is I. And then I'm going to hit 420. And I'm going to put in, let's put a negative sign in for fun here as a present value. So when I compute a future value, it'll come out positive. So 420, you see that in there, negative. And then the payment zero. And I'm going to hit compute future value. And what do you see there? Can you see it if I hold it up to the right angle? I hit compute. And I hit future value. And here, by the way, I hit compute present value. Out popped 598.82. And there you go. So that's how to use a financial calculator for lump sums. Pretty straightforward. Like I said, when we get to the annuities, then we'll start using this payment button. And it's no harder than putting in payment here. It's no harder than putting in any other buttons. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind in your calculator, sometimes when it comes out of the box or you, you, you may have used it somewhere in another application or you bought this calculator off of somebody, you want to make sure that your payments per year, see this button right here, it says I slash Y, but when you hit second, you get into another mode, second, and you get into this little payment, this is payment per year, P slash Y you probably can't see it right there p slash y so if you hit second and then you hit this button you see what it says there it says one payment per year that's what you want to make sure if it's monthly and it's compounding things monthly that number will be a 12.0000 you want it to be a 1.0000 and it'll always work in this course so how do you do that well, you're going to hit, if it's, if you want to change it, either way, then you're going to hit second P slash Y, and then you're going to hit 12, for example, and then hit enter. And notice my P slash Y now is 12. You see that? Now, I don't want 12 because that's, that's going to screw up all your calculations in this course. So let's make sure that it's going to be one. So we're going to hit second. P slash Y, we're going to hit one, enter, and there it's back to where it is at 1.0. Cancel, and then you're, you're back, you're good for now, because if you hit P slash Y, there it is, one. So just make sure that that's correct, and you'll be fine. You'll never have to, you'll never have to hit that P slash Y button again in this course. And hopefully your calculator is already set up to have a P slash Y of 1 already. But if it's not, 
you just got it fixed for yourself okay now what we're going to do so this is the first video on time value of money the next video that you should watch after this would be annuities